so today I will talk about how you can re uh, use real-time together with Cube. And for the guys who visit uh, the keynote today, it will be with the heterogeneous multicore. So already a little bit of a spoiler here. So very short uh, about Toradex. So Toradex is a worldwide company. Uh, my accent is from Switzerland, so that's where our headquarters is. But I'm from Seattle, but as you can see, we have uh, offices all around the world. What we do is uh, embedded system on modules uh, with the operating system. So the problem uh, we discussed today is if you have an embedded system, so we talk about devices, and as an example here, we will use a, a, a demo. It's of course it's probably not what you build, it's maybe an industrial robot, but we have uh, here as an example this, uh, this funny robot. And we have a lot of different requirements for this kind of application. So you want to have a high performance, really nice GUI. So you want to use Qt if, if you are at this event. Um, you need maybe a lot of protocols, so you want to connect with, uh, with Wi-Fi, you need an IP stack, you maybe have security stuff you need to encrypt, so you need a, a big ecosystem about uh, connectivity and protocols. You may have peripherals like USB cameras, maybe sensors and so on, so you need a lot of drivers uh, you would like. But you also would like to allow other developers to develop on a robot or a real-time system without the risk that they take down the whole system, that they damage uh, the system. I mean, in this case, it's just a robot. Another uh, common thing we see is like drones. So if you write an application for a drone, you don't want to risk that the drone comes down uh, because you made a programming mistake. Then if you talk about real time, you want to have short latency. That means if something happens in the real world, you want to react very fast to it. And then the other thing is real time. That means if something happens, you want to have a defined time, how long it takes you to react on it, and you want to make sure you, you stay in that, in that time. Um, so if you look at the first part of the requirements, this really fits well for an application processor. So a very strong processor you maybe have on your cell phone, you, you can all do that. From the software side, you, you want to use a full operating system like a Linux or Windows. There is a big ecosystem. You have a lot of tools you can use with that. So th that would be a good fit for the first part of requirements. The second, the low latency and the real time is a little bit harder with this system. Uh, so there, a microcontroller would be a better fit. It's a smaller cache. That means if you're somewhere in your program and you get an interrupt and you need to react, you don't need to flush everything out and, and then start over there. So they're really optimized to react very fast. They may be not so fast in, in general because they don't buffer so much and so on. On the software side, you want to use a real-time system. If you work with real-time, normally, as less code as you have, as better. So maybe bare metal or a small a real-time system if you're on a Linux or a Windows or something like that. There's a lot of code, a lot of things you can go wrong and crash your drone or, or, or your machine. Or in our case, the robot f fails over. So how did you solve that traditionally? So one way, uh, which is common, is to use just one CPU, but run a real-time operating system on that. Like a famous one is QNX, uh, Windows C is also real-time, there is uh, uh, Mentor Graphics has so, some, VxWorks has so, so there's some, um, some systems available. The, uh, the little bit bad thing with that is normally have, a, have not that big of an ecosystem. I mean, Linux, you can everything. You get all libraries, all drivers. If you go with one of the Dober rating system, you normally limit you. Another common way is to use Linux and use a real-time patch. So there's a real-time patch, and then you can actually uh, force Linux to be quite real-time. And for many applications, that works well. Uh, so on our system, a lot of people use soft PLCs for machine control. They need, I think, like one millisecond uh, worst case latency, and, and that works. But you also make a lot of trade-offs. So your drivers can mess around it, like people can bring down your system, because everybody needs to behave very nicely. Uh, a third a possible way is hypervisor. So that means you run two different kernels, one real-time, one not. It could be Linux and another operating system. And you do kind of that virtual on the same CPU, or if you have a symmetric multi-core, like on a Intel or on some ARM where you have two the same core, you can use one for real-time and one not. But it's also complex and you have a lot of trade-off. 
So one more is to solve it on a hardware side, and that's also what's very common at the moment. Here for the robot, you would introduce a microcontroller, and then you do all the critical stuff on the microcontroller. He here you can see we have, for example, gyroscopes, accelerometer, uh, which measure the angle, and then you have motors, and you don't control that from the same system which on Linux and your Qt. You run that from a microcontroller, and then you have a a slow uh, serial interface to communicate with your main controller to, um, uh, to give you command to go forward, backwards, um, and so on. So that's common, uh, commonly used. However, with the IMX7 and some other uh, SOC, so it's, it's from NXP, but other uh, providers have that the same, and what they talk today uh, in the morning, we, we call it heterogeneous multi-core system. So you see there, really on the right side, you have two Cortex-A7. And that's really what's in your cell for, where you can run a full operating system on it. And then the special thing is you have there this uh, secondary CPU platform. This is a microcontroller, uh, like you could see on the slide before. And then you have a special unit uh, which kind of manage that they don't conflict with each other. So you can, for example, say UART is a serial port. It's assigned to the, to the main core or to the secondary core. Same with the memory. You can say which memory owns both, and you can say you have shared memory. And then you have a messaging unit, so you can say, oh, I wrote something in a memory, and then you can kind of notify the other guy, hey, there is something ready. And there are semaphores to make sure that they don't conflict. But everybody shares the same bus. But both can access the main RAM, uh, both cores can access all the, all the peripherals. So that's really this new heterogeneous multi-core. And if you use a system like that, you are able uh, to do something like that. So you only have one system and you connect everything to one system. The nice thing is now in your, you may change your architecture and suddenly you want to control the, the HID device uh, also from the M4 core, so you can do that. Or you say the distance sensor, I want to control directly from the A7 core, so you can do that. You, you stay much more flexible. So how can you use that system? So Torodex, what we do, we provide the, these modules where already RAM and flash and everything is, is on it. So you can use one of these modules uh, to use that in a real product. And you see here, we have a, a lot of modules. They're all pink compatible, so you can switch. And you see the one with the gray boxes there, M4, they have all that uh, heterogeneous multi-core system. Uh, then, yeah, let's see how that works in, in a demo. So. We have here this robot. Uh, it was built together with uh, Ant Micro. That's the part which is like the, med uh, the 3D printing and stuff like that. And then we have Qt, which actually built the, the, the user interface. And so here I have one of our uh, system on modules with this IMX7 on it. And I can plug it in. So they're like, really, to plug in. And then now it will be very hard to see. So I will also describe what happened. So I put it down and I boot it up. And now you can see it already, the Linux is still booting. So I don't know if you see it, you see the messages coming out, Linux booting. But the robot is already balancing. So the M4 already took over. And that's also what they talked uh, uh, in the keynote about that uh, heterogeneous multicore that you can boot really fast. So e even Linux, it's not 100% working yet. It, it's already balancing and it's fine. And now you saw Qt is coming up and you have, it's a simple interface, but it has a face. Uh, you can come later or come to our booth, and you can make him angry and, and switch it. But you see, even if I do a mistake in Qt, or if maybe some rendering takes super long and takes up all the CPU, it doesn't affect the balancing. So it's really safe. And, and here, I mean, this robot tips over. If you have a big truck, maybe people get hurt, or drones come down, uh, or, or something bad happens. Um, so, yeah. Close to done, touch just a little bit more about the, how that really works. So we have a Linux with a boot to Qt uh, stack. It's uh, Qt 5.7 for the user interface. And then we have uh, a software framework called uh, RPMSG to talk uh, with each other. So on the Linux side, that looks like a serial driver, a TTVI driver. So it's very easy to communicate with the microcontroller. On the microcontroller side, we have a small real-time operating system called FreeRTOS. And there we use the open AMP uh, implementation for that RPMSG. So those RPMSG, they, they communicate uh, together and you see voltages. I also, I didn't bring, I have like a game controller so it can drive around. So, so they really have to communicate with each other. So that's, that's pretty uh, simple to do. 
Uh, just a few words about general advantages of that heterogeneous multi-core. So they, these two systems, they can communicate really fast together. So normally you use I2C, serial, SPI, they're quite slow, but here you have sh shared memory. So if the microcontroller writes 10 megabytes into memory, it's immediately available for the, for the A7 core. Just needs to say uh, it's there. It's zero copy, no overhead. So big advantage uh, there. Also firmware upgrades. If you have an external microcontroller, you may need to use JTAG or SPI or you write your own bootloader to reflash the system. Here, you share memory. You can just put it into memory. So very, very simple. Um, it's less hardware. You don't need the, the, the microcontroller extern. Uh, you bleep uh, flexibility. You don't need to decide really at the beginning which peripheral is controlled by which uh, CPU. So you, ca you can change that. Uh, and yeah, a microcontroller has access to main memory. So that, that makes a lot of stuff uh, easy. Uh, that's it. Basically, the other use case, it was featured in the keynote today, that's low power. So you switch off the main core and just use the M4 core to collect of data. So very common is like maybe variables. So if you don't look at it, you, but you still want to track your fitness and everything, and from time to time you watch your uh, uh, watch. So you bring up the user interface, bring up your A7, show it, and otherwise you switch it off. And we also have like buoys and the weather station where, where people uh, uh, use that. Uh, if you're interested in uh, building that robot or get source codes uh, here, you have all the all the resources, or you can come down. Uh, that's my contact if you have any questions. Thanks a lot.